Welcome to a lesson on constant coefficient higher order linear homogeneous differential equations. When we have a higher order constant coefficient homogeneous linear equation, the procedure is the same as it was for second order. We just need to find more solutions. If the equation is nth order, we need to find n linearly independent solutions. Let's look at an example. Let's determine the general solution to y triple prime minus three y double prime minus y prime plus three y equals zero. Just like we did for the second order equation, we will assume the solution is y equals e to the power of rx. Next, we determine the first through third derivatives using the chain rule, and then perform substitution into the differential equation, which gives us the equation shown here. And now we divide both sides by e to the power of rx. Notice e to the power of rx is never zero, and therefore we don't lose any solutions. And we could also factor out e to the power of rx instead if we wanted to. The result is the following characteristic equation, which is r cubed minus three r squared minus r plus three equals zero. And now we need to find the roots, which we can do by factoring or solve graphically. To solve by factoring, we use the technique of grouping, where we cut the polynomial in half on the left, and then we factor out the greatest common factor from the left and right, and we should have a common binomial factor. Factoring r squared from r cubed minus three r squared, we have r squared times the quantity r minus three. Next, we factor out negative one from negative r plus three, which gives us negative one or minus one times the quantity r minus three equals zero. Notice we do have a common binomial factor of r minus three. We now factor r minus three from the left, which gives us the quantity r minus three times the quantity r squared minus one equals zero. r squared minus one is a difference of squares, giving us a factor of r minus one and a factor of r plus one. The three roots or solutions are r equals three, r equals one, and r equals negative one. Notice we have three distinct real roots. On the left, if we were to graph the characteristic equation, notice how we do have roots of negative one, one, and three. When we had a second order linear homogeneous equation with constant coefficients, recall when we had two distinct real roots, the general solution was y of x equals c sub one times e to the power of r sub one times x plus c sub two times e to the power of r sub two times x. And because we have three distinct real roots, the general solution is y of x equals c sub one times e to the power of negative x using the root of negative one plus c sub two times e to the x using the root of positive one plus c sub three times e to the power of three x using the root of positive three. Let's look at a second example. Let's find the general solution to the fourth order constant coefficient linear homogeneous differential equation. Going straight to the characteristic equation, we have r to the fourth minus three r cubed plus three r squared minus r equals zero. Notice how we have a common factor of r. Factoring out r gives us this equation. And then from here, we need to find one root for r cubed minus three r squared plus three r minus one, which we can do by analyzing the graph on the left. Notice how the graph on the left does show the root of zero from the factor of r. And notice one is also a root, which means r minus one must be a factor of the given degree four polynomial. From here, we can perform synthetic division, which I've shown here below, where for r cubed minus three r squared plus three r minus one, we have one negative three, three negative one. Because one is a root, we have a one here on the left, and then we perform synthetic division, which for review, we bring down the one, multiply by the root of one, one times one is one, and then we add vertically. Negative three plus one is negative two. Multiply by one again, which gives us negative two. Add, get positive one. Multiply by one again, add, we get zero. The one, negative two, one represents the factor of r squared minus two r plus one, which factors again. Notice how we have r times three factors of r minus one. This indicates the roots are zero and one, where one has a multiplicity of three. So again, if we go back to what we know about second order, constant coefficient linear homogeneous differential equations, if we have two real equal roots, the general solution was y of x equals c sub one times e to the power of rx plus c sub two times x times e to the power of rx. So for our general solution, we have y of x equals, using the root of zero, we have c sub one times e to the zero, and then plus, because the root of one has multiplicity of three. We have c sub two times e to the x, 
plus c sub three times x e to the x plus c sub four times x squared e to the x. Notice for this third term here, we have two factors of x. Simplifying, we have the general solution of y of x equals c sub one plus c sub two e to the x plus c sub three x e to the x plus c sub four x squared e to the x. Let's look at one more example where we have complex roots. Let's find the general solution to y triple prime minus two y double prime plus nine y prime minus 18 y equals zero. The characteristic equation is r cubed minus two r squared plus nine r minus 18 equals zero. Analyzing the graph on the left, we can see one root is r equals two, which gives us a factor of r minus two. And then to determine the remaining factor, we perform synthetic division using two. So notice how again the coefficients are one, negative two, nine, and negative 18. And the root of two is outside. We bring down the one, multiply by two, add, multiply by two, add, multiply by two, add. The result is one, zero, nine, zero, which indicates the remaining factor is r squared plus nine. So now in factored form we have the quantity r minus two times the quantity r squared plus nine equals zero. This indicates r equals two, which we already knew from the graph. And then r squared plus nine must equal zero. Subtracting nine and square rooting both sides, we get r equals plus or minus three i. Recall when the equation was second order and we had complex roots or complex solutions, the general solution was in the form of y of x equals c sub one e to the power of alpha x cosine beta x plus c sub two times e to the power of alpha x times sine beta x. Which means our general solution, first using the root of two, we have y of x equals c sub one times e to the power of two x, and then using the two complex solutions or imaginary solutions, where alpha is zero and beta is three, we have c sub two e to the zero times cosine three x plus c sub three e to the zero sine three x. Simplifying, we have the general solution of y of x equals c sub one e to the two x plus c sub two cosine three x plus c sub three sine three x. We'll look at some more examples in the next several videos. I hope you found this helpful.